Welcome back to The Exchange, everybody. XPRIZE is out with its next challenge to the smartest minds in tech, and it's to find new ways to detect and suppress wildfires. The competition comes with an $11 million reward, and my next guest says the rise of AI and other tech is presenting unprecedented opportunities. Joining me now is Peter Diamandis, founder and executive chairman of the XPRIZE Foundation. Peter, it's great to see you again. Welcome back. Uh, pleasure to be back on CNBC, Kelly. Good you to see you too. And of course, we've had like the wettest, rainiest season. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, because but, all the wildfires, I've heard from some people in the startup space who are looking at that, and just as they were hoping to get funding, the wildfires went away mm. for a season. Which I, I'm joking. Well, Everyone now knows the seriousness here. They're coming back, and they're coming back stronger. You know, we've doubled uh, number of wildfires uh, in the last 40 years, and it's continuing to get worse. And I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of this. Uh, you know, the definition of insanity for me is doing something the same way over and over and expecting a different outcome. Mm -hmm. We've got to change the way we are fighting wildfires. I mean, it's billions in damage. It's uh, hundreds of thousands of lives lost. And uh, it's, you know, it's time. You know, we're living in a world of incredible exponential technologies, you know, AI, robotics, drones, 3D printing sensors. And this XPRIZE is challenging innovators around the world to find a fire at inception, at the point of ignition. Oh, wow. If it's, big, if it's bigger than two meters or it's moving, it shouldn't be, put it out fully autonomously within 10 minutes, right? That's the goal here, and uh, we think the technology for that is very definitely possible. Yeah, although be careful, you know, my backyard or during the summer season, you know, we get that fire pit going. I, I actually would like to. So one of the questions about wildfires as well, that, to my understanding, is that a lot of it can come down to the brush clearing beforehand to try to make sure that there's not a lot of tinder there and things like that that become these kind of political hot points. Do you think, and this is what I always appreciate about technology and innovation, could it offer us a way around some of these entrenched political fights by just finding new and different ways of both identifying fires when they break out, treating them? Obviously, we all get heartburn watching, you know, the water and the chemicals and everything else, um, and, and even keeping them from spreading or being so severe. Yeah, listen, the... Dealing with extra brush and clearing forests and all of that, you know, forest management is still going to be here. But the challenge is right now we're fighting fires, wildfires, destructive wildfires, the same way we did 50 years ago. And that is what needs to change. So our goal here, this prize, is two parts. One is detection, space-based detection, and other means of detection, as well as, you know, Imagine having a thousand square kilometers, and if there is a fire that's not registered, that is bigger than it should be, that you know it's going to be put out on its own autonomously. And uh, this is a chance to save lives. And and we just announced today. I don't know if you remember Palmer Lucky was the founder yes. of uh, of Oculus, and he's now running a multi-billion-dollar uh, defense company called Anderil Industries. And he's the first team to register. We had a second team right on the heels of it. And Palmer's prediction is there's no question that technology to, you know, make wildfires a thing of the past exists. Hmm. And this competition is going to incentivize teams to, uh, to do just that. That would be amazing. I, I hope they would get all the possible accolades if, if we do this. White House, whatever, whatever is compelling, <laughs> although, uh, you know, profitable well, business. Well, we got $11 million, $11 million in the line. And, you know, yeah. my call today is for teams out there around the world, if you're an innovator, an entrepreneur who wants to make a difference, you know, go to xprize.org and consider registering to form a team. Uh, we expect we'll have hundreds of teams with lots of different approaches coming at solving this. The first time also ever, Kelly, we are inviting people to add to the purse. It's $11 million mm -hmm. today. If you want to contribute 10 bucks or 100 bucks, the money goes only to the person that wins the competition. So you're incentivizing someone to solve a problem that hasn't been changed in decades and wow. is getting worse. So go to xprize.org and uh, you know, kick in 100 bucks to the pot. That's a great idea. So let me ask you while we're talking kind of innovation yeah. and, and development, you know, when you watch AI and the rollout of some of these chat bots, the, the, both the promise, the challenges, all the issues, where is your mind going in terms of problems that will now need to be solved? And do you look at this from a fundamentally skeptical point of view or from a position of excitement? So I come, uh, you know, my term that I use, the work that I do with XPRIZE and Singularity is about abundance. That these technologies are going to enable us ultimately to uplift every man, woman, and child. If you think about Google today is the same for the poorest child and the wealthiest child, mm -hmm. AI is going to become our physician. It's going to become our educator, and it's going to level the playing fields. The best educator on the planet 
is going to be an AI teaching your child based upon their favorite color, sports star, movie star, whatever they want. The best diagnosticians in the world uh, to diagnose you uh, is going to be an AI. You know, there's 7,000 medical journals published every day. I mean, a medical article is written. I mean, how many have your physician read today, right? And AI will have read all of those. And so AI ultimately is going to demonetize and democratize education and health care. Are we going to have challenges? Of course we are. And, um, you know, I'm less concerned about the AI being dystopian or evil. It's more the human application of it. But it's the same thing with any new technology. Yeah, no, uh, and it's, it's funny. Yeah. I sort of similarly... I, lo I lo kind of look at it the same way. The only question with this one in particular I have that really, really bothers me is this idea of garbage in, garbage out. You know, when, when Wikipedia yeah. is not the most reliable thing and suddenly that's informing these language models, it's kind of multiplying the, that problem. You're 100% right. These large language models are based on consuming all of the information that we humans put out there, right? And it's as good as it gets and as bad as it gets, and it's being trained on that. There's a great book I just finished reading called Scary Smart by Mo Gadot, and he says, you know, we have to be careful about how we interact with each other, how we interact with machines, uh, because as parents of this new, I'll call it life form coming <laughs> online, you know, we're training them, we're teaching them uh, on the information that we put out there. And so it's not some AI, it's us. We're reflecting back on ourselves mm -hmm the corners of the internet, so to speak. No, that's really interesting. I guess the final question, just while you're here, I am curious, as we talk about the startup ecosystem, a lot of the liquidity has vanished because of SVB and some other uh, problems, the economy and so forth. Yeah. How bad is it? Well, listen, uh, money is not flowing free in those golden uh, rivers in, in Silicon Valley as much as they were, but here's the countervailing force. The, the expense of starting a company is now lower than ever before. Right. These uh, AI systems, the large language models and so forth, are allowing entrepreneurs to get new companies up and going faster and cheaper than ever before. So will we have a dry spell? I mean, I run a half a billion dollar venture uh, fund, Bold Capital, and we're being very careful with how we use our capital. We're mostly investing in longevity mm. uh, and AI, but, you know, because we have to make that money last. But the good news is... Uh, Today, as an entrepreneur out there, you can start a company to a large degree on sweat labor and the platforms that are available uh, at very low cost. Yeah. So I think we're going to have a lot of innovation, especially in health and education, especially from AI and hopefully in wildfires as well. I'm tired of wildfires uh, kicking us out of our homes just and to killing lives. Let me just, yeah. I just heard, Peter, is this true that nicotine actually is good for longevity? Like what? No, I'm not talking about cigarettes. I'm, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. This is like yes, a whole yes, thing. Yes. It, yes. The people the are taking it, these capsules or whatever. Yeah, nicotine is a, is a neurostimulant, uh, and it's bad when it's principally inhaled. It is addictive. Uh, so, you know, I spend a lot of my time focused on longevity. I do believe that this next 10 years is the decade dur during which we're going to add 10, 20, 30 healthy years in our lives. Mm. It's been in decline because of suicide and because of all kind of COVID, obviously. Yeah. But AI, quantum technology is coming quickly, biotech is going to allow, you know, give us the tools to extend our healthy lifespan. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I'm excited about that, and I want to live and see as much of this incredible future coming our way as well, possible. And you are helping shape it. Uh, we, and you've turned the Dow positive. Listen, look at that. All right, look at that. That's awesome. <laughs> Peter, thanks so much for your time today.